Okay everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can actually use my brain to control another person's arm to make them subscribe to PewDiePie. And then after we try that experiment, we're gonna go even deeper. We're gonna be talking about where the impulse to even move your arm comes from. We say it comes from our brain, but how does our brain suddenly have that impulse to move your arm? So you might not have thought about it much, but what actually happens when you decide to go like this? Well, the first measurable thing that happens in your brain when you decide to move a limb or do anything is something called a readiness potential. And it's an actual voltage that you can measure in the motor cortex of your brain. And what that does is once it reaches a certain voltage, it triggers a synapse to occur in your brain. And that triggers a chain response that goes down your brain, through your spinal cord, through your shoulder, and down through the axons in your arm. And once it hits your muscle, then it triggers the muscle to contract, and that's what causes your arm to move. So the signal that your brain gives your arm travels down these long nerve cells. And nerve cells have really long portions of them called axons. And the axon is what carries the message down it. And these axons can actually be pretty long. So one nerve cell can actually be the length of about half your body, which is pretty cool. That's one of the reasons why it's so hard to repair nerves once they're broken, is because most of the time they're just one single cell that has been cut. And so you can't really repair a cell and try to put it back together. So what happens in this long nerve cell is basically an electrical signal that's generated through the movement of ions, mostly sodium ions. And because sodium ions are positively charged, it means that you can create a voltage in your cell just by pumping in or out these sodium ions. And so this electrical signal moves down your arm, not as fast as electricity moves through a wire, but pretty fast nonetheless. And you can also measure it if you just stick electrodes on the arm. Okay, so what I've done here is I've hooked the electrodes up to my muscle. And so what these are going to measure is that when my brain sends a signal to my muscle to tighten, it's going to pick up that electrical signal and it's going to turn it into a signal that goes up these LED lights here. So basically, depending on how strong I flex my arm, these LED lights are going to light up. So you can see that when I just tighten my arm, they go to full strength. So this is actually measuring the brain signal down to my arm. You can see that when I just move my arm with my other hand, it doesn't light up these lights here. That's because I'm not actually flexing the muscle due to a brain signal, but I'm flexing it due to my own movement from my other hand here. So it doesn't light up. You have to actually create a conscious signal that goes down and triggers your arm to flex. And then it lights up the lights. So here's the question. What if instead of intercepting this signal to light up these LED lights, what if I intercepted this brain signal to my arm to actually move the arm of another person? It just so happens that on the arm right here is the ulnar nerve. And the ulnar nerve is close enough to the surface that if you put electrodes on it, it can get stimulated by an external electrical potential on it. So basically what that means is I could take my own brain signal that's traveling down my arm through the axons and I could intercept it right here and then I could apply it and insert it into another person's arm so that when I move my arm, they also move their arm like this. Let's see if it's actually possible. And if it is possible, what I'm going to do is use the power of that signal to join the fight and make people subscribe to PewDiePie. Okay, so I've rounded up four non-subscribers to PewDiePie around my neighborhood. I'm gonna have them state their name and answer why they have not subscribed to PewDiePie yet and why they're a T-Series fan. State your name. I'm Ander. Okay. Why have you not subscribed to Pootie yet? And why do you like T-Series so much? Well, T-Series is just way less mainstream and uh, PewDiePie is way too mainstream for me. LaCroix. Okay, state your name. Hello, my name is Indiana and I am against PewDiePie because I hate the derogatory terms used against lasagna. I think it's very cruel to the community. Okay. Reasonable, I guess. Uh, I'm Julian. Uh, I have not yet subscribed to PewDiePie because he lost me my job at Fiverr. Hmm. Interesting. I think there's a backstory to that that we're not going to ask about. <laughs> and my name is Twix, and uh, 
I'm not subscribed to PewDiePie because he's, I heard he's good at gaming and I just don't like that. He just doesn't like games, I guess. Well, luckily today, we're going to use my own brain to make all these clowns subscribe to PewDiePie. Let's see. Okay, right arm. You feel like a rat or a I, monkey no, I, I getting the animal like tested an honorable on? honorable subscriber, but just not there yet. He wants to subscribe to PewDiePie, but he just I, hasn't been able to have his brain tell him to do it, if that makes sense. And that's problem. why we need the one and he only. Needs someone else's brain to tell him to do it. <laughs> I totally understand that. Yeah. We're gonna try with multiple muscles to show that you can actually stimulate whatever muscles you want in his body with my brain. If I just move my arm, it doesn't do it because I'm not using my brain to do it. Well, I'm using my brain, but through this hand. So, but then if I m use my brain to stimulate my muscles, then it'll do it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Looks like exactly what my head's doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, test number one, using my brain to subscribe another person to PewDiePie. Subscribe! Oh! <laughs> oh, got it! There we go. Subscribe! <laughs> okay, ready? Okay, here we go. He got it! He got it! <laughs> subscribe to PewDiePie, there we go. <laughs> Oh, we, got oh! we got it. That's a double subscribe right there. Power of the Action Lab's brain. <laughs> Break his iPhone. <laughs> so you may not have thought about it much, but what actually happens when you go like this? How did I just decide to move my arm? Well, when you decide to move your arm, it seems like a conscious thought. You think to move it and it moves. So right now I'm deciding to move my arm. But did my conscious brain decide to move it or something else? Well, there's been multiple studies done on this. And the weird thing is that there's actually something called a readiness potential that happens in your brain prior to the conscious thought of moving your arm. So what I mean is that you have the conscious thought to move your arm, but what happens before that is that there's a potential that rises in your brain. So there's something that happens in your brain before you even have the thought to move your arm. Now what some have read this data to mean is that our subconscious is actually making all the decisions. So our subconscious actually decides to move the finger and then after it decides that the readiness potential rises until the synapse occurs that causes the chain reaction that actually moves your finger. So that should actually be a little bit disturbing to you. What that means is that our consciousness is not actually making the decision to do something, but it's actually our subconsciousness making the decision and then it inserts it into our consciousness as if it were our own conscious thought doing it. But in 2016, scientists in Berlin actually performed an experiment to try to prove whether it was the consciousness or subconsciousness making these decisions. So what these scientists did is that they used a computer to measure these readiness potentials in the brain. And they were going to try to see if this program on the computer could predict in real time the conscious thoughts of somebody or the conscious movements of somebody. So they hoped to measure the readiness potential in the brain before the person actually had the conscious thought to move some limb and it could predict they were going to move something. But the interesting part is that subjects in the experiment actually learned how to trick the computer. So what would happen in their brain is the readiness potential would go up but then the movement wouldn't actually occur because the person consciously thought to not do that movement. So that would seem to contradict the opinion that consciousness is a byproduct of subconsciousness because how do you consciously decide to cancel a movement that is done by your subconscious which is actually controlling your consciousness? It seems like the consciousness is actually the one in control, not the subconsciousness. And it gets even weirder than this. For example, a scientist named Benjamin Liebet set out to answer the same question of whether it's the consciousness or the subconsciousness that's involved in making decisions and choosing what we do in our daily life. So what Liebet did is he took brain surgery patients who were undergoing brain surgery, so their brain was open, and he actually put electrodes on their somatosensory cortex, so he was able to measure the impulse created by touching a person's hand. So he touches their hand and he's able to measure it in their brain. 
So what he measured was that when he touched their finger, there was about a 30 millisecond delay for the signal to move up into their brain. And then after that 30 milliseconds, they had the conscious thought that somebody had touched their finger. And then after that 30 milliseconds and the conscious thought were up, then they had around 500 milliseconds of uh, voltage activity and spikes in their brain in that som somatosensory cortex area where the, that corresponded to their finger. And then what he did was, instead of actually touching their finger, he just touched that part of their brain that corresponded with somebody touching their finger. And in that case, the patient had around 500 milliseconds of activity in their brain and they felt like somebody touched their finger. And then what he did is he stimulated the thalamus in the patient's brain. And that resulted in the initial voltage spike after 30 milliseconds, but not the ongoing 500 millisecond potential voltage spikes in the brain. So that experiment proved that in order to have the conscious thought that somebody touched their finger, they had to have that 500 milliseconds of ongoing brain activity in the somatosensory cortex. But the weird part about this is then how does the patient initially feel and have the conscious thought that somebody touched their finger after only 30 milliseconds if 500 milliseconds of potential in their brain is required for them to have that thought? Well, what Liebert proposes that 500 milliseconds that happens afterwards is actually referred backwards in time so the patient actually is consciously aware that that's going to happen afterwards. Because if that doesn't happen afterwards, then they shouldn't have had the conscious thought that it happened. Now this sounds a little bit crazy. If Liebe is right, what it means is that our consciousness is actually in charge and we have free will in our consciousness but the information is actually referred backwards in time so that our subconsciousness gets that readiness potential ready before we actually have the conscious thought to actually do something. Now on the macro scale that just sounds insane because that would mean that let's say you have a soccer ball there and then the soccer ball suddenly starts moving and then you move your foot to kick it. And you say that the reason the soccer ball started moving was because you kicked it later in time. That doesn't really make any sense. The cause always has to come before the effect on the macro scale. But on the quantum scale, sometimes the cause can come after the effect. So it's not actually clear whether it's our consciousness or our subconsciousness that's leading the way in the decisions we make in our life. In fact, consciousness is one of the least understood aspects in science. For example, why is it that a computer with all the moving signals and information going on in a computer can't experience something, but for me, when I have all these synapses happening in my brain, I can have an experience? There's nothing currently in science that can explain why we have actual sensations. They can explain the mechanism behind it. We know very well how the synapses occur and the actual mechanism for why they're occurring as if we're a big moving mechanical machine. But there's nothing that can explain the actual sensation of it. Why do we experience color? We know how color occurs and what it is and what causes it, but we don't know why we experience color. And consciousness is one of those things that I'm not sure if it will ever be solved in science. I'm not sure if we'll ever scientifically be able to explain why we have sensations and can feel and experience things. Whereas some other object that's having the same atomic reactions and mechanical movement and molecular movement doesn't experience something. Now consciousness is so hard that it's been dubbed the hard problem of consciousness in science. Now this is why some people can turn to religion to explain things like this. For example, maybe it's caused due to something that's not physical, but due to something that's spiritual going on inside you that actually makes you have consciousness. Now there's a lot of theories out there, religious, philosophical, and scientific, and you get to choose what you decide to believe about where consciousness comes from, because science has not solved this yet. Okay, and I'd like to thank all my participants for letting me control their body for a while. So I'm going to allow them, since I was able to control their body and their arms and everything and make them subscribe to PewDiePie, I figured I'd let them plug whatever they want. So Ander wants to get into Yell, so all you Yell uh, committee members out there, let him in. He's worth it. He was able to be controlled easily, I guess, so. <laughs> and Indiana has a channel. I'm gonna send you over there for a behind the scenes video. If you wanna go check it out, I'll put it in my uh, description yes. below. It'll be very funny, go watch it. And then you wanted to plug nothing, right? 
He's just here for the heck of it. This is pretty fun. And Twix, what did you want to plug? Uh, check out my Instagram, twixx.williams. So. All right, go check it out. I'll put it in a link below. Thanks to all these guys for helping out. Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And check out theactionlab.com to see my new subscription box. And I'll see you next time.